In this video, we're going to review the Glasgow Coma Scale, or GCS. If you already know about the GCS and want to review how to calculate it for the OT boards, click the timestamp link below to jump right ahead. Healthcare workers frequently use the GCS as a scoring tool to assess for level of consciousness. When I was an EMT, I used the GCS with every patient and in documentation to communicate with the healthcare team, such as nurses and doctors. In reality, in the field, you don't really need to remember how to calculate every section because you will have charts or you can use calculators to get the score. While occupational therapists do not directly calculate GCS for patients, if you are working with the adult population, you are likely to encounter GCS in your day-to-day -day work. For example, in the hospital, in acute care, occupational therapists may read a patient's medical history and find the GCS score as reported by EMTs and paramedics for a medical emergency or for trauma. Knowing what the score was can provide some insight into how impaired the patient was prior to admission to the hospital. Unfortunately, you will have to know how to calculate GCS during your OT board exam and to know it by heart. The OT board exam may ask you about GCS either to interpret the score or to calculate the GCS score itself. Since you will get a whiteboard or a piece of paper, I recommend that you write out the GCS and calculate the score visually, instead of mentally in your head when you're under the stress of taking the exam. While it might take some practice to learn how to calculate GCS, it should not be a question you should be missing on the exam. A GCS score is comprised of three areas, eye movement, verbal response, and motor function. A score is assigned to the performance of each to get the total. While the GCS has become widely used, it is not very user-friendly. The GCS has a confusing score range from 3 to 15. Therefore, the lowest score you can get is actually just a 3. Instead of the lowest score for each section, eyes, verbal, and motor being 0, it is 1. Therefore, 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 3 for the lowest score. How do you get a score of 15 then for a normal functioning adult like you and me? The mnemonic to remember is 4 eyes, like the name you call someone who wears glasses. Interesting fact. Four eyes is a nursing term for how and when they can document a patient's skin integrity. So for the eyes part of the GCS, you can score from one lowest to four highest. The second way I remember how to add up the GCS is four, five, six. Four for the eye response, five for the verbal response, and six for motor response. The GCS is an assessment of three different motor and sensory systems. Therefore, a person calculating a GCS needs to interact with the patient to see their eyes, verbal, and motor response. What's nice about the GCS is your interaction with the patient is quick to allow you to get a GCS score. Calculating the score itself is a little trickier. So adding four plus five plus six gives you your 15. How do we interpret the scores? A score of 13 to 15 would be mild brain injury. You and I are in this score range. A score of nine to 12 would be moderate brain injury. If you have a score of eight or less, the person will likely be unconscious or in a coma. Let's calculate GCS. Eyes can be spontaneously open, like how I have them open. That's a four. Eyes can also open to a stimuli such as you calling their name. That would be a three. Keep in mind that a person sleeping is not considered a deficit, so they would still be a four because when they're awake, their eyes are likely to be open. What would be a two? The person does not respond to your voice and you would have to pinch them for the eyes to open. This is considered a painful stimuli. Other things to introduce painful stimuli can be a pinching of the nails or a sternal rub. Remember how one is our lowest score? That will mean that no matter what you do, their eyes won't open and you have to pry them open to look at them, such as with the pen light. If you introduce a painful stimuli such as a pinch, don't forget how they respond because it is used later in the motor response section, which is from one to six. Remember, four, five, six. Although GCS is usually calculated in the order from eye response, then verbal response, and finally motor response, it would make more sense to explain motor response next. Since we talked about the painful stimuli introduced if the person did have their eyes open and you get your score of 4, or if they did not respond to your voice you get a score of 3, and it would be a 2 for opening their eyes to a painful stimuli. Motor response is how someone reacts to directions and if you don't, to a painful stimuli. If you ask a person to raise their hand for example, and they do that, they would be a 6. Remember 4, 5, 6. Let's say you had to pinch someone because they didn't respond to your request. The normal response would be to pull their hand away. That's how you would get a five for motor. A four would be responding in some way or another, 
but not as directly such as pulling your arms away. Maybe they may move a little bit or make a face. When someone becomes even more impaired such as comatose, they demonstrate specific patterns. That would be the next lower scores of 3 and 2. Just so you know, the score of 1 would be no response and they would just lay still. To make sense of 3 and 2 for motor, we have to talk about decorticate and decerebrate posturing. You should also know how their extremities look like because the board may not necessarily mention the terms decorticate or decerebrate in your question. One way I remember what they look like is imagining someone on their deathbed. Before someone dies, they may be praying, therefore their elbows are flexed and their shoulders are internally rotated. This is decorticate posturing and will give you a score of 3 for motor response. For decerebrate posturing, you know those cartoons with someone on their deathbed and then their soul elevates towards the heavens? This is what I imagine decerebrate to look like. They would be floating in the air and therefore their arms are to their side and extended. That's how you get a 2 for motor response. If someone is very comatose, they will likely have no response and you will get 1 for motor response. I hope this makes sense. It's how I remember decorticate versus decerebrate posturing and how their extremities look like. The last score to calculate is verbal response. This is done by asking the A and O questions to see if someone is alert and oriented. What is your name? What city are we in? What year is it today? What happened to you to call 911? So 4, 5, 6, the most we can get is 5 for verbal response. They will have to answer all your A and O questions correctly to get a 5. If they get at least one wrong, they would be a 4. If someone is not alert and oriented, for example, they would say, we are in outer space, and you would give them a 4. 3 would be if someone responded inappropriately to your questions. For example, if you ask someone what year is it, and they say something random, like Donald Trump, or if they are unable to answer any of your a &O questions. I was taught to ask four a &O questions, with the fourth one being to situation, such as what happened to you to call 911. Some nurses and doctors ask only three a &O questions, which is why you may see a &O times 3 sometimes, or a &O times 4. This can be confusing because if you see a &O times 3, it does not necessarily mean that they got the fourth question wrong for the situation, they were just not asked the fourth question. You'll also see healthcare professional ask people other things like who's our president or other random things. This depends on the way you were taught and I don't think there's a universally accepted method for this. So verbal response for three is if a person says something random. How would you get two? That's if they make sounds but they do not make any sense. Someone who is having a stroke for example may produce sounds that is a two. Last we have one. That's if they cannot speak at all or make any sounds. So putting this all together, we get the total scores for eye response, verbal response, and motor response. Another way to remember 4, 5, 6 is starting from the top of your head and using your body as landmarks to remember the order. You have 4 for eyes, next you have your mouth which is below your eyes, so that's a 5. Moving down from below your mouth you have your arms for motor response which would be the 6. The OTD website has a calculator that can quickly calculate GCS. I recommend that you play around with it to help understand how each eye verbal, and motor add up to get your total GCS scores. This calculator is nice because you can see in real time how each section for eye, verbal, and motor response affects the total score as you change some of the subscores. The calculator also provides interpretation for mild, moderate, and severe brain injury. I hope this video helps you understand GCS a little better. Even if you have a good understanding of what GCS is, I highly recommend practicing and calculating scores just so you get this part down. Good luck and thanks for watching.